vlogging in 21 by 9 how cool is that so welcome to this video and i want to show you in this video how you are able to vlog with the cinema pro app on your uh, xperia 5 mark ii or xperia 1 mark ii so i'm using a gimbal right now and this is a Yun smooth 4 gimbal and this allows me to have like very smooth animations when i walk actually it's not animations it's just like stabilizing the whole thing when i'm walking and you can see it is pretty nice so this is one of the best things that you can get for the uh, cinema pro vlogging kit so you need some kind of stabilizer or even a selfie stick would work but mm, i would say selfie stick is worse because the software stabilization the eis is not the greatest i will show you a clip right now and this now is a reference point how would vlogging look like without using a gimbal um, walking the same speed i walked before now with a selfie stick only the selfie stick has the good thing that you can like extend it so it is a bit further away i can use the main camera a little bit more to uh, vlog but uh, of course it is more unstable and the stabilization in the xperia uh, especially with the cinema pro app is not the best so if i walk here around and uh, yeah you might see it is wobbling a little bit uh, left and right of course if you use the ultra wide angle camera then it might be a lot better when it comes to stabilization Video, this time with the ultra wide angle you can see the wider field of view you can notice the stabilization is a lot better than on the main camera sensor exposure should be pretty much the same also don't forget your 16 millimeters ultra wide angle camera lens on your sony xperia 5 mark ii or the xperia 1 mark ii or the xperia 1 and 5 because at least on the mark ii's they have autofocus so you can use it pretty much for everything you can use the main camera as well in this light conditions it makes a lot of sense and i have a wider field of view so you can see more of this uh, wonderful beautiful park here that i am uh, right in uh, here the um, University of Auckland Park and uh, yeah this works pretty nicely and uh, sometimes I have to adjust the gimbal a bit but yeah this is what I would suggest for vlogging for the majority of people because the 24 one you saw it is a little bit close to my face so I think this one makes more sense for the majority of people to have if they want to vlog with the 60 millimeter one and another important thing is the microphone that you use so i'm using my ceremonic microphone that i use for pretty much every vlog that i do and it has a three and a half millimeter jack that i can plug in directly with a cable of course into my um, xperia 5 mark ii and i have the possibility then to record audio and cinema pro app allows me to even set the level of audio so i have the possibility to set it a little bit higher like i set it to seven i think for my ceremonic microphone which makes more sense than the uh, five that it is i think preset by default so i have the levels from zero and from one i think to ten that you can set up for your microphone which is i think pretty nicely it should work with every microphone that you have and when we are talking about microphones you have to keep in mind that the microphones that you usually use for a camera like the sony zv1 um, fujifilm xt 30 or something like this or xt 20 that those microphones don't work because they are only trs they have like two rings or something like this and what you need is a trrs microphone this one the ceremonic one is specially made for smartphones that has a trrs ring or configuration and you need the same for your microphone if you want it to work with the sony xperia 5 mark ii so keep that in mind if you have an older microphone you can of course buy adapters so that little adapters that you have to plug in then from trs to trs from trs to tr from trs to trs uh, so a female to a man and uh, works pretty nicely then with this and uh, you can use any microphone that you want but keep that in mind otherwise you will be uh, shocked that your mi microphone your favorite microphone is not working for some reason yeah and here are even cars driving by as you can see here so yeah the Auckland University is really doing a lot when it comes to uh, keeping this place very clean and uh, good looking 
Then one major issue that you might encounter if you don't have an ND filter on your Xperia 1, Xperia 5, Xperia 1 Mark II or Xperia 5 Mark II is that everything is a little bit overexposed or it's very hard to get the 180 degree shutter rule running. I don't have it running here so maybe it might be time to get an ND filter for your uh, Sony device. I know it sounds a bit overkill but there are some little clip filters that work pretty nice or there are some little clips where you can have like I think it's 67 millimeters uh, millimeters or 35 millimeter screw filters where you can get basically the best ND filter for your device and of course uh, there are also smartphone ND filters that clip on uh, that come with an ND so this is a cheaper solution and I think most of them work fine as well. I don't have one because it's a bit hard to get them here uh, in get them here in New Zealand. But if you have Amazon, if you have eBay, there's endless possibilities to get an ND filter. Another option that has very much high influence on your picture quality is the profile you set for your image. So Cinema Pro has Cinema Pro has several different picture profiles that you can set for your video. And I'm using the NA for vlogging because it has like the best boosted colors. But if you want to have some muted colors, more for color grading, you can go with the Venice profile, for example, or various other profiles to create like a different atmosphere, like of underwater or suspense or whatever you like to do if you're creating a movie, for example. For vlogging, I think stick with the NA or the Venice if you want to color grade and correct it later on come to one of the biggest issues that I have with the Cinema Pro app, color grading. Cinema Pro makes it very hard to color grade, at least if you're a Linux user. This uh, format HDR HLG is not supported by many video editors. I cannot edit it directly on the phone itself. Of course there's a little trim action that you can use on the phone itself, but that's basically everything. You don't have an option to export it to SDR, so you have to use your favorite video editor of choice. Most of them don't support HDR, so or they are very expensive. So what I stick to usually is KDN Live and my FFmpeg script for converting HDR to SDR. Link, by the way, in the description if you didn't see it yet. Otherwise, what I found working pretty nicely is Shotcut, an application that's available for Windows, for Linux, I think even for macOS that you can download that will automatically convert those HDR videos to SDR. It will give you a prompt, you can choose whatever quality setting you want to use for conversion and it will then convert into that with SDR. It doesn't work always, so sometimes I have to bring out my FFmpeg scripts and tweak a little bit here and there to get the right coloring, but in general it is pretty good. But it's a hassle. So instead of like just recording and then at the end just cutting and uh, sorting the video clips. What I do now is color grading as well, changing the colors, try to make it fit right. You can see it probably in my timeline right now in the video that you saw that it was not always perfect. And that's one of the biggest gripes I have with Cinema Pro and why I probably won't use it for vlogging because it is just so much work this color grading and for a simple vlog I really don't want to do this. So this is one of the biggest gripes and one of the biggest issues that I have with Cinema Pro. If you have a tip for this, how you can do it on the phone itself, if Sony has a tip for this, if Sony is working on a little converter, it would be awesome. It would be very very cool to have this and um, yeah, otherwise Cinema Pro just have a toggle, an option, I don't want to record in HDR. Simple as this. What do you think? Write it down in the comment section. The only other thing that you have to have for a nice vlog is an idea what you want to vlog about. So I'm not sure if I had a great idea today to vlog about how vlogging with the Cinema Pro app is done on the Sony Xperia 1, 5, 1 Mark II and 5 Mark II. But you can write it down in the comment section what you think about this video. Do you like it? Uh, would you consider vlogging with the Xperia and the Cinema Pro app? Or do you think it is too complicated because of the yeah, non-auto exposure up and down and you have to set your exposure manually and you have to have an ND filter eventually? So what do you think about it? Is this Xperia device ready for vlogging? Is this 
really the best vlogging device, the best vlogging setup, or do you have another idea how to vlog with the Xperia devices using a gimbal, using a selfie stick, or something else? You can write it down in the comment section. That's everything for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Until the next time, bye. And this, just as a comparison, is the recording with the Sony native app, which probably doesn't support my microphone, any external microphone for that matter. So yeah, you have to hear all the little noises that are around me and all the little birdies that are around here. As you can see here, those, but also those ones there. So yeah, but the good thing about this, I don't have to worry about running into the sun because it is auto exposure mode on so it will auto expose uh, to my face and do does everything that i really really want so this is a nice little outtake with the sony default camera it would be so cool to have the sony default camera also with better stabilization i'm using the selfie stick by the way uh, to have with external audio external microphone support just a few lines of code sony do it just do it it's not rocket science. Just do it. Do it! <laughs>